Hi everyone, uh, this is my third video in my heart sounds series. So in the last video we talked about the heart sounds, S1, S2, S3, and S4. So quick review on that, S1 is your love, S2 is your dub, um, S2 the dub could stand for diastole starting. Therefore, the lub of S1 is when systole is starting. S3, this 3 is sort of fluid-like, and you have an S3 when you have fluid overload. It's the sound um, that the turbulent blood flow makes when um, it's filling a ventricle that already has fluid in it. S4, the 4 here is sort of stiff and non-compliant, and that stands for your stiff and non-compliant ventricles. So S4, it, just like S3, S4 is an abnormal heart sound. S4 is heard with someone has um, stiff ventricles. So now let's talk a little bit about the stethoscope. So the stethoscope has two parts. This is the diaphragm. And the smaller part up here is called the bell. My trick for remembering which is which is that the diaphragm has a larger diameter. Versus the bell over here has a smaller diameter um, and you can imagine it looks a little bit like a bell here. In this picture it's upside down. That would be the handle and that would be the bell. So diaphragm has a larger diameter. Bell is the other part that's a little bit taller and skinnier. And the diaphragm is better for listening to high-pitched sounds, like high-pitched murmurs. Versus the bell is better at lower-pitched. So my trick for remembering this is use your diaphragm to make a high-pitched sound. So you take a big, deep breath in with your diaphragm, and then you belt out this super high-pitched sound. So we're going to use his diaphragm here, strong muscular diaphragm, and then he's going to belt out a very high-pitched sound. The bell is better for lower-pitched sounds. Um, I remember this. I think of Carol of the Bells. And it starts with that intro, which I'm terrible at singing, but like bum, 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 and that's sort of a low-pitched bell noise. So that's how I remember that. Now, murmurs could be either high-pitched or low-pitched, depending on the kind of murmur. So murmurs are just abnormal blood flow through the heart. So turbulent blood, through, blood flow through the heart makes a murmur sound, which is sort of like a shh sound, uh, instead of the normal lubbed-up or silence. So some murmurs can be high-pitched, some can be low-pitched, so it's good in practice to listen uh, to the chest, to the heart sounds with both sides of your stethoscope so that you can catch all of the normal and abnormal heart sounds. So now let's talk a little bit about areas of auscultation where on the chest to listen for different heart sounds. So first your heart looks a little bit like this. And so it has an apex and a base. So up here is your base, and down here is your apex. So I like to remember it, apex is the first letter of the alphabet, also where you can best hear S1. Base, B is the second letter of the alphabet, and it's conveniently where you can best hear S2. S3 and S4 are also best heard at the apex. 
So you can just remember it, or you can remember that the way that your heart is turned in your chest, uh, the apex is representing your ventricles here. So S3 and S4 were turbulent flow uh, due to fluid overload or stiff ventricles, uh, but a murmur having to do with your ventricles. So now let's talk a little bit about where on the chest, where on the rib cage you should listen for these heart sounds and which valves are best represented by different areas on the chest. So the mnemonic that I learned in nursing school for this is ape to man. So A stands for aortic, P is for pulmonic, E is for herbs point, and that's where you can equally hear S1 and S2. So I think E for herbs, E for equal, S1 and S2, T was tricuspid, and M is mitral. So let's look at our intercostal spaces. This one's first intercostal space, this one's second. Third, fourth, fifth, etc. So the aortic valve is best auscultated at the second intercostal space on the right side of your chest. The pulmonic valve is best auscultated on the left side of your chest at the second intercostal space. Herb's point is best auscultated at the third intercostal space. So that's ape. T for tricuspid is best auscultated at the fourth intercostal space, um, close to the sternal border. And M for mitral is located in the fifth intercostal space, uh, just medial to the midclavicular line, which is about here. So that's ape to man, um, and the whole point of this is to help you locate where the murmur is coming from. So first you just listen um, for if the murmur is happening during systole or during diastole. So let's say it's happening during diastole, in which case you would hear a lub sh instead of lub dub. So you hear lub sh, and you know there's a murmur during diastole, so you know either the valves that are supposed to be open are stenosed, so that you're hearing some turbulence as blood flows through them, or the valves that are supposed to be closed are regurgitating. Um, so during diastole, normally the mitral and tricuspid valves are supposed to be open, so you might hear uh, lub sh if those valves are stenosed. You might also hear lub sh if the valves that are supposed to be closed, like your aortic and your pulmonic, um, are actually letting blood regurgitate back through and making a um, murmur. So listen if your murmur is during systole or diastole. Once you know it's during diastole, you can listen to various places on the chest to try to decide um, which valve is causing the murmur. Um, what happens in reality is you probably just go get an echocardiogram and visualize which valve is not working and how it's not working. Um, but it is good to know how to use your uh, auscultation to help assist in your physical assessment. So that is Heart Sounds Part 3. Uh, let me know what you thought if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.